Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online meeting number 40. September 18th, is that right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know why I'm always surprised why it keeps getting later and later, but <laughs> I guess the speed at which it's happening is what's getting me. As always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be here right now, right here in this meeting. So let's go ahead and get into what we're doing, which is going to look a lot like what we did last week, because I'm not getting any agenda items. And we're kind of in the glide path to uh, Wix 3.9, so we'll just kind of do that. Um, but we have a few bugs to go over, so let's go do triage. Ready, Bob? I am ready. All right, let's go do this. Dun, 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 eight issues. Although you might I want to refresh. Oh, dear. Nine issues. Cool. Let's go dig into it. Wix 4 feature should be planned. Ah, this is the thing tied to a whip, right? Yep. This is my meta whip for the 4X stuff that we've been discussing on Wix devs. Yes, we should we should definitely do that. Yeah. All extension compiler messages have level of none. No. All right, here we go. Declare level of their messages, which means all of them are suppressed. Hmm. Well, that's kind of interesting. Oh, this is from Sean. All right. I don't know what that means off the top of my head, but all right. Um, so they get lost in the translation for Forex data? Oh, they don't use. They used to inherit from Wix errors. Oh, that's probably just a mistake. Um, I think that uh, was the implication. I see. Well, yeah, probably it's probably something in the refactoring that was done. Um, you can give this to me, I guess. Go figure out who did that. It might have been me. It might have been someone else. I'll go look. Um, anyway, it should be fixed. Um, light 0267. All right, this bug. All right, this bug is great. Let's have a conversation about this bug. Um, the warning is thrown when you have an unparented component in a different fragment, but no longer throws when the unparented component is in the entry section. Yeah, so this is a check somewhere in the linker that makes sure that there's always a, a all the components that end up being included end up in a feature, or at least that's supposed to be. The interesting thing is that it's a duplicate of ICE 20 or 21 or something like that. So... Oh, that's interesting. Ha ha ha. So, um, we can fix this in Wix 3X, um, but at least you're not slipping through with nothing. I think the ice will should be catching you in the case in the end anyway. Unless, of course, you suppress validation, then you're not going to get it, but you're suppressed validation, so you're obviously doing validation somehow else, right? Right. So, um, One hopes. <laughs> um, so, we should we can fix this um, and all that. The question is, um, in Wix 4, would we fix this or would we pull it out and put it in as part of the icebreaker project? That's what I wanted to talk about a little bit. Right, right. Um. And and for those of you on the call while you were sitting here discussing this, I'm looking for you know your vote too. But I I want to hear what Bob says because <laughs> this is a, this is the thing that I didn't get to write the email for that I've brought up a couple times of the hey how many of these ice checks should just live as part of the compiler linker and here's an example of one that already lives as part of the linker obviously broken which is a bad thing but yeah. Um, uh, so, so, yeah, this is this is the interesting bit, right? Yeah. So part of, part of the icebreaker project is to to replace the ices, um, obviously, but also 
to you know make it easier for people to contribute a little bit of code because these checks are you know well I don't know I swag I'd swag it as a, about like half of the of the ices are actually really straightforward. Okay. Uh, this would be one of them. And this is one of them, right? This is easy. Yep. You, know, you you have all the the connections you need right there. You, yep. know, you don't need anything more than obviously you don't need anything more than the MSI output since the ice catches it. Um. So you know, really, I think it 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 really boils down to how you look at the icebreaker project. I think. Um, do you want to have this project um, be like the home for checks in general? Yeah, and the answer to that is not no, not in general, because obviously we do stuff in the compiler to validate input that, you know, moving it from the compiler where you're already, you know, the compiler is parsing a particular element, parsing a particular attribute, the compiler in that spot knows the right thing to do. And the alternative would be kind of silly, you know, to, to try to replicate all that or move it. I mean, even if we just said, oh, all checks should go here. Oh, you're talking a huge amount of work just to move it. It doesn't, I don't think that makes sense. Then you move into the linker, where the linker is, is in a spot where, you know, it's assembling things. And therefore, again, it's in a position to know intimately when something is wrong. So, you know, does it make sense to move those kinds of checks out of the linker? And that's where, you know, the it starts to get a little fuzzier. Maybe not a whole lot fuzzier, but a little bit. Um, because the the icebreaker project, the the way that it's will be implemented, um, you know, relies on an interface that lets us look at the the output while it's being constructed, and gives us most of the data that the linker has, but not all of it, and certainly not all of it at the state that the linker is looking at it. Again, the linker is doing a lot of work to, to pull things together so it knows stuff just because it's working with it at the time. Um, you know, then you kind of get to the point of, well, there's a bunch of, uh, well, you know, remember the, the, the letter C stands for consistency. Um, and that's where, you know, the ICEs live right now where after everything's all put together, they can run and say, you know, you probably don't want to do that. Now, those are the more annoying ICE messages. Um, and <laughs> the biggest question people run into about them is, how do I stop them? How do I, you know, it, all, especially you know, looking at like, uh, oh, God, I don't remember the numbers anymore, but all of the, you know, per user, per machine mix stuff that, you know, just doesn't apply in this day and age. Still, you got to deal with them. Um, so, going back to the bug, this particular bug, I think, is something that the linker does in addition to all of its other work. So, this is the kind of check that I would suggest go into the icebreaker project. Um, this is, you know, this one is kind of easy because there is already an ice for it. And this check is something that the linker does in addition to its normal work. Um, and I think for me, that's kind of the, the easy, the easy split is if, if it's a check that the linker is doing in addition to the work that it needs to do, 
that's the kind of check that we could move into the icebreaker project or either start there or in this case move all right because in this case i'm pretty sure light is storing extra data to keep track of this uh or the linker is doing extra data because it doesn't really care in the end right. as long as everything is wired up so you get the errors if things don't hook up together yeah. obviously but it's probably doing extra work or no longer doing the extra work yeah or doing it poorly all right, so you're saying you would vote that this one should move into the icebreaker project. Yeah, yeah. But again, this one is, is uh, this one's straightforward because, yeah, it hits it hits a couple of, you know, easy criteria. There is an existing ice to, that does this, so that makes it easy. It gets fuzzier, and, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, the linker should produce correct output. But it doesn't have to be perfectly consistent. Um, I mean, in this, using the C out of the ice. Word. Yeah, yeah. Um, Completely valid to do that makes absolutely no sense at all. There's no advantage of keeping a component without putting it in the feature. Yes, right. Um, it's interesting. Uh, uh, you know, the other thing in my mind is that just because we're moving something out of the linker, again, not necessarily moving, creating it outside of the linker by putting it into the icebreaker project, it doesn't mean that the linker is doing less work. I mean, it, in a way, it, it all boils down to just because it's out of the linker, does, as long as the linker is using the extension to do these checks, does it really matter? It, you know, is it is it just a philosophical difference of something that's baked into the linker or something that's baked into something that the linker uses? Yeah, so the um, it is with the compiler case that you listed up front, right? Because you can get errors out of the compiler much faster than you can get errors out of the linker end. Yeah, yeah, that's of that's, binder. that's another, and certainly out of the binder. That's another good point. The the compiler will give you messages during compilation, yeah. um, which is, is going to be faster. Uh, yeah, I mean, even if we got them at link time before binding, it's still going to be faster. That's right. And, well, and, you know, there's something to be said that we could run the um, the icebreakers before um, cab processing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we could at least get all the file metadata, but not have moved any files yet, you yeah. know, around. So um, one of the advantages of shifting this these things around, because we won't have to have a final .msi file. Right. Um, all right. So John basically agrees. Blair basically agrees. I don't have anybody else saying anything. We have a number of other people that could pipe up, Sean or Jacob or whatever. Yeah, Eric is, I'm overhead today. Um, yeah. All right, Bob, people are tending to drift towards you unless Jacob drift towards my position. All right, so. And Jacob's vote won't count anyway because he wasn't present enough. <laughs> with a slow connection. All right, so we have, um, with that out of the way, um, do we want to fix this in 3x if the ice is working? Do we just want to yank this in 3x? Uh, uh, well, you know, it's one of those, wow, look, it's been that way since 3.5. Um, my guess is that it's probably not uh, a huge change. Yeah, you know, if it was just uh, if it was lost in a refactoring. Mm, three five may have given us groups or the nested groups. Oh, that's interesting. Which of course is the second or the first hardest thing that linking does after linking oh, itself. Nice. Um, <laughs> mm. Everybody that goes in the group code goes, no, I'm not coming. I'm not going in there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, like, I won't Rob, come back. This is your bug. <laughs> that's the way it always was it was like 
yeah, I'm not going in there. And I'm like, what? It's hard, but it's not impossible. Um, anyway, I, I'm I'm indifferent mostly. Uh, I let's put it into three X for someone to look at. Okay. If there's interest, I don't think it's it's uh, you know. Uh, too awful because we do have the ISIS. We do know what this bug is all about. It makes very good sense, so it won't be that hard for us to discuss when we try to figure out what we're going to do with all the 3X bugs. Right. All right. Uh, Moving on. PS snap and installation rights to wrong registry key. Okay. I don't know anything about registering a PowerShell. I sadly know a little tiny bit. Um... I but assume these are different versions of PowerShell, and we're targeting an old one, not PowerShell 3? Um, uh, the last PowerShell I worked with was 2, and it still used uh, the, the 1 path. Oh, I see. So the 3 should not have been changed. Oh, it's 1 or 2. So it never should have been changed to 3? Interesting. I don't know. It's PowerShell, man. All right, so clearly three is wrong. Um, so I guess we should toss this in 3x. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe John will pick it up since he knows something about PowerShell where the rest of everybody's going, uh, yeah. It's like on my to-do list kind of thing. Required PowerShell version 3.0. Oh, you know what I bet it's doing? I bet it's just taking the required PowerShell version. Yeah, I'm sure. And putting that number in there. And the code has not been updated to understand that PowerShell 3 puts stuff in a different place. I'm almost certain that's what this bug is about. Yep, I agree. Cool. All right, cool. Well, that makes it straightforward. So, so great. That's the bug. You can put it three and we can fix it. Yep. PowerShell Snap-in does not currently support PowerShell three. Heath was the one that cared about this, so it's too bad he's not around. Uh, yes, that was his uh, extension. Yes, it was. I mean, it was great to have it. I just, I don't know, maybe. I suppose I could get into it, but whatever. Anyway, there's a suggestion to add a low battery warning before kicking off an install shield installation. Oh, really? This seems like half... Oh. This could <laughs> avoid, I assume they're telling us, so we should have it too. This seems like a feature could be half completed or board installations that may not be impossible to clean up since there's now a feature to turn off rollback and creation. No, that's been the case. That's not true. We don't turn off rollback. I mean, there's always been disable rollback, but right, nobody right. sets That's... that. Nobody should set that. Because it'll also destroy your commit custom actions, which you don't want to do that either. Even exactly. without using fast, problems could result. And I don't know what system restore. I mean, MSI handles power outage issues. Yeah. And Burn is designed to handle this. And I'm totally fine with someone writing a BA that does low power. I don't want to write a custom action for Windows installer to do it. Is part of low battery is part of Windows installer standard action. I don't care about most of this personally. Um, yeah, I mean a detection would be interesting, and if someone wanted to be, um, you can put a con. What would you do? You put, put a condition. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, all. so all right, it's a feature request. We could put it in three X. I I I'm with Blair. I I would admit it. I'd suspend it and go. Yeah. Someone could do that. Right? But there are so many other bugs that are more interesting than this one first. Yeah, I and Jacob's like, the engine could have a variable, but I wouldn't put this in the engine. I'd put this in a BA. So it'd be like, yeah, we could put this in Wix standard BA, and we could implement it in, win, in DUtil, right? The battery util. Bat util. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. Now I almost want to do it. Um, yes. I said almost. Yeah. So um, <laughs> anyway, I everybody's doing a big, you know, meh. So 
no, 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 no. Anyway, um, yes, Bob, are you? I really like the bat yield idea, though. Um, yeah, <laughs> I found out how to market it. Woo! A feature yes. I don't even care about. Um, uh, yeah, that. Um. Yeah, I guess I, I can almost see it. Um. I can almost see it being useful as a condition, but yeah, I I don't. As a condition, but that'll block the install. Um, yeah. That well, would be that's, batty. That, ha, 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 ha. Um, that was very witty. Um, yes. Well, I mean, that's really what they're asking for. No, it's this like, is, I think, a warning. Uh, well, then that's even... Low battery warning. Yeah, okay, warning, I guess. Well, then, okay. I could see us exposing it as a value, you know, no AC battery level or whatever, and then Property. someone could and and burn. Would you have a variable and burn? I well, I'd that, still put it in the BA. Well, the, that's the problem then, right? If you're, I would expose it as a burn variable, but that requires yeah. putting it in the engine. Yeah. Right? No. Yeah. Um. So this would be, you know, would we go to the point of, well, and Bruce brings up a great point. It's like, you know, the, the, it's, it's highly, it's highly questionable. I mean, what, you know, what's your, what's your threshold? You're on battery power and we're going to block? No, that's silly. Right. Uh, you're a 5% battery. We'd have to give you a number, and then you'd have to decide for your install how much it is. And then what does that mean? Because right. every battery is different. And I had a battery that as soon as it hit 10%, you were done. Right, <laughs> as soon right. as you hit 20%, you were done. Granted, it was a you know four-wheel machine, <laughs> which yeah. means they basically kept it plugged in all the time. But <laughs> I, no, no, there's so much noise. This will be so noisy, and people will hate it. I hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would have to be not only do we provide this, we provide it in either a burn variable or a custom action or with standard BA, right? Yeah. I mean, we'd, yeah. have, we'd have to put it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, okay. That util is great, but I'm so. Gonna... And by the way, I'm totally fine if someone wants to write add this function to dutil because I think it'd be cool to have just to have it, but that's it. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm there with the suspend. All right. Cool. So if you want to learn how to add a feature to dutil, there's links inside that now suspended bug that about how to find the Win32 functions, and you can learn how to add stuff to dutil, which is its own little world, which is pretty cool. Anyway, opportunities. Values does not value does not fall within expected range. Mm. Wow. Wow, thank you for yeah. the gigantic block of text, which I could pull yeah, out. That, that doesn't work so well. The the link is quite a bit better. At... Well, I mean, it's fine. You just copy and paste it to something that formats XML. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm sure Votive has a bug here. Maybe. Open in 3x. Well, <laughs> this is a horrible error message, so it's something. Oh well, yeah, so, yeah. No, you're right. That that exception probably does come. Well, <laughs> I can't even go that far. It might come from votive. Oh gosh, sorry. Votive MPF, whatever the whole layer thing is, in the end, is probably in our code. I can't believe it's coming from Visual Studio as a. Here, this is all you got. Uh, no, but it could come from any number of oh, uh, extensions. Extensions. Besides the one that comes with our project. Anyway, yeah, 3x. Someone should fix this. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, 3x is fine. Unfortunately, we're probably going to need the project to repro it, but well, you know, maybe somewhere in that activity log, there's the right thing. Ugh. Yeah, nothing jumped out at me. Yes. Ball util for MBA. 
for MBA. Oh, is this going to be the ball util functions? Can't use lib, so yeah, in usable form. Yeah, we discussed this before, and it always came down to, yeah, we should do that. Um, I don't know how to implement that. Oh, Sean opened this, and he signed it to himself. Uh, yeah, cool. I'd be interested to see thoughts on how to have that implemented. And Jacob just drew ASCII art, and I don't know what the heck that means. Oh, C plus CLI, yeah. You can do that. The problem is that to make it really friendly in C sharp, you have to write a block of code to wrap it all up, and at that point, you're practically writing it all over again sometimes. But yes, I'm all I'm all good for that. That looks great. Oh, man, 4.0, if Sean has it, happy to have it in 4.0. It'd be awesome. Although the big problem, I think, with, with Volutal is all the XML. Because all that right now uses MSXML3. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying it may be one of those things it's easier to rewrite in C Sharp. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Which is yeah. unfortunate, because then maintaining the code isn't going to be much fun. But anyway, it, if, if Sean's looking at it, it'll be great to see whatever he comes up with. I'm, I'd be very interested to see what he discovers. Reg files into one component. So you want heat to generate one component instead of many. I want this instead of that. Yeah, I, I. This isn't. This isn't. This looks a lot like what, you know, early two thousands MSIs looked like. This doesn't look uh, good. Like I wouldn't put a lot of this. I don't know if I put a lot of this. Plus, this is not a good path. That's not. What are these people doing? Adobe. I hope these aren't the Adobe people. They're repackaging. I hope they're repackaging. Well, I hope they're not repackaging, because I hate repackaging, but whatever. Oh, gosh, yeah, this doesn't belong in here. This doesn't belong. No! What are you doing? Stop doing that. Wait, did Heat do this? This is actually pretty good. Yeah, I don't I don't know how I have never looked at the, Look, the if, dot ridge. If he did harvesting. this, I was like, this is the one thing of all of his stuff that I said it could do is this. Now, this yeah. is kind of kooky, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Next. Anybody disagree with me? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to have people disagree with me. And they assigned it to me. And they unassigned it for me. Okay, that's kind of weird. Yeah, no. Bad idea. I don't know what they're talking about. That's not right. Cool. The docs, when setting priority zero, says image generation executes synchronously. However, the command it runs is ngin install emitting the queue parameter. Ngin itself emitting the queue, which means scheduled priority three. Well, that's not good. Okay, that looks like a bug. Yeah, I'm concerned because we haven't touch that code in a while. Well, it means it's always been wrong, maybe. Maybe zero isn't valid and we're letting it slip through or something. I don't know. I'd have to go look. And so, yes. I agree. This could be fixed in 3x, I think. Ooh, can it be fixed in 3x? Uh, be a behavior change. Yeah, or, or maybe NGEN changed its command line since we changed up our, our stuff. That's always possible, I suppose. Oh, uh, and and I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if like Visual Studio uses the NetFX extension. Don't know. Anyway. Um. Well, we should fix it. The question is when. Anybody? Anybody? Votes? 3x? Push it to 4 because it could be a breaking change? Expect that it's an engine problem or change that we need to catch up to? Sean's like, I don't engine, but yes, but you should have an opinion. 
never used it at zero. We push the 4x, all right. All right, so we're all over the board. Bob, your call. you got 3x right now. Uh, yeah, I don't... I, I need more data before I can form an opinion. Um, I will assign it to myself for investigation. All right. In 3x, which means it could go into 310? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this yeah, not a 3.9 thing. It's not a 3.8 um, thing, for sure. No. Although I appreciate the fact that they opened it, because that does tell us that that's probably where they tried it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll take a look. Because um, as I recall, this, the, this custom action is mostly immediate, and it's just queuing up a bunch of uh, yeah, it's a command quiet, line parser. quiet CAs, yeah. Honestly, the native code is probably doing too much, and we should do more in the managed code, or in the compiler. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Here, run this. Here, run this. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I will investigate and see if we're consistent with our doc and their doc. Boom! I assume we're done. Oh, wow. Except for that one. Are you keeping that around, Bob? I'm just writing up a... Paragraph because you're suspending it? Yes. Fair enough. All right, moving on to things that you already know is true and basically everybody else here knows is true, and if people have been following along, they probably know is true. Um, Wix 3.9. We are still on track to finish in Halloween 2014, which now feels still a fair bit away, but I kind of like not stressing about it. It's like, yeah, we just know it's going to be done there, and everything continues to look good, and we're not taking any bugs, so it's all good. Um, Wix 3.10 starts after Halloween 2014. Um, every once in a while, we have to remind Bob of that. Um, so feel free right now to type in little message, Bob 3.10 doesn't start until after Halloween. Um, I mentioned that because I submitted a bug that should be fixed in 3.10 in a pull request, and Bob accepted it into 3.9, and it was and so if you well, if, if someone had marked it with milestone 310 I I still would have taken it because yes so you weren't paying it. attention yes because you're like 39 I'll put a bug at 39 uh, anyway the reason I bring this up is that if anybody s did a sync on like Saturday uh, you will see that we <laughs> at the wrong time if you would have pulled at the wrong time on Saturday you would have got a, a force update because we made the executive decision to just slam over the the undo of the change so that these changes were not in the 3.9 branch. Um, or if you were watching the repository, you saw a whole bunch of changes happen that then in the end didn't happen. Yeah, that's because we fixed it. So anyway, just so you know, that's what happened. Um, they say never force push, and we don't force push unless we don't think anybody pulled in between there. Although you have to admit, force push is a pretty awesome command. It's like, I am a Jedi Knight. I can force push. It's like one of the best powers in all of the Star Wars games. Anyway, um, Wix 4 features. Yeah, now's the time. Um, I've been doing some things. Been doing some things in uh, Fire Giant stuff still coming. Um, for example, right now, um, in the middle of we're in the middle of this major binder refactor. So if there's any doubts of no more automatic merges from Wix 3x to Wix 4, this is pretty much going to do it in. Um, because the binder is going to get massively cleaned up. Um, and Though that would only affect changes to the binder. It would just affect changes to the binder, correct, but it's things are getting crazy. So I'm trying to get that um, in as quickly as possible, which hopefully means this week. And if nothing else, I will have the pull request out that does a whole bunch of the refactoring, but the refactoring is simply refactoring. It changes like no code. Like it doesn't actually fix code. It just refactors it so that code is isolated and then can be fixed, which may be what I have to do. Um, much easier to refactor stuff into spaces and then verify that it works and then um, come and then put all the, then clean up each unit like I was trying to describe it to my wife, and I was like, um, take a gigantic, huge box, chop it the smaller boxes of junk, and then go in later and clean up each little box individually. 
So anyway, that's, for example, something I'm doing in four. So if you were thinking about doing something in four that was in the binder, um, uh, beware, something bad is coming. But um, we that's should. Good. should but something good on the other side, just something to be aware of that's that's coming in. I probably shouldn't send, should have sent mail to Wix before I started. But anyway, um, just something to be aware of. Um, and again, I, I used, we used to say, you know, three months and three months for Wix 4 timeline, but I'm tossing out there right now. Big question mark on that, but right now, March 2015 seems like the thing we're kind of looking at-ish. Which I think means we basically slipped Wix 3.9 six months and then slipped Wix 4.0 six months ish, three months six months something like that ish. Three, yeah, closer to three, but so, um, which I guess you know thinking about it, yeah, that's not completely out of character for us, and it's not completely horrible, you know, it's not like oh gosh, we've been here for years, um, which we've done in the past. And that's what we're trying to avoid, exactly. Which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. And I think slipping 3.9 was all good, right? It was all prudent. Yeah, yeah. I hope we don't slip well, 4, because I'd like us to kind of get this big thing. There's a lot of cool stuff in 4 that I'm hoping we can get out in this time frame. Yeah. And again, I bring this up, and I berate this point simply to get people thinking, oh, yeah, you know, I really want to do that 4 feature. Now is a great time to be doing that 4 feature. I know people are busy, but I just want to put it out there. If you're thinking about it, uh, let's go. Of course, the other flip side is that if you want to start using Wix 4 as a Wix dev that kind of understands what's going on, now's a great time to start picking up 4.0 builds. They're going to start showing up more regularly. So, you know, if you're you're in it, go ahead and hit it because, you know, you'll find problems before other people find them because in these refactorings, there's always a possibility that something blew up. Although I'm trying to add more tests, but it'll take more time. <sighs> All right. So that's where we're at progress. Questions, comments, things people want to talk about, other stuff going on out there that we should think about. Um, I know I mentioned the uh, fireside chat or whatever. I want to call it something better because that sounds old. I want to have something futuristic that sounds cool, but I don't know what to call it. Um, lasers, lasers. Yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't got it. Anyway, hopefully come up with something that's cool. Um, laser side chat. I see. Very good, Eric. I like well, it. Yeah. Well followed up. Um, anyway, still thinking about doing that. Still thinking about doing that towards the end of the month. Um, just had a week. <laughs> Vulcan mind meld. Now you guys are starting to get this is starting to get much better. Ooh, but Vulcan relates to yeah. fire, so we've got the theme. Oh, well, well done. See, I wanted someone to go Star Wars, kind of much more Star Wars kid. But you see, you're appealing to Bob's side, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, Sean wants to ask about keeping the star in the SID and the HTTP extension. Yeah, I, I sorry, I need to go back and, and it fell off the radar because when you accept a, a pull request, there's no, the discussions disappear. They're still out there. You have to go find them. Um, and yeah, so on the SID extension or the HTTP extension, the SID thing, yeah, I guess star is all right. I mean, the groups, groups and uh, services uses the plus sign, but it's just another magic character to differentiate this thing from that thing. Um, I I abhor the Windows installer overuse of um, magic characters to differentiate things. But I all right. Well, if at least there's something you can point to, I cackles uses the star. So I guess there's some history we could point at. So. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I don't have a better alternative, so I guess that. I mean, the only better alternative would come up with something that looks kind of like, you know, HTTP colon, so it's a little bit more descriptive. So you could say SID colon, whatever, but that's just more things. So star, since there's prior art, it's probably the best option. So yeah, I still think a comment on that one part of the C++ code would be a good idea, though. <laughs> um, so I think that's the HTTP extension. If you don't follow pull requests, that probably made no sense to you, but Sean and I were discussing, Sean through I am and me talking at him, uh, were discussing the um, uh, pull request he sent for doing the HTTP extension. Um, and that'll be good, because that's going to be one of the first features to push back to three, so it'll be interesting to see how well that goes. Um, and by the way, this kind of thing that happens here, I expect is kind of how the... Uh, the laser side chat, or whatever we end up calling it, ends up going. Um, it will be 
a few people that talk and a bunch of people answering text questions, and we'll go from there. Um, any other questions? Any other comments? Things people have going on that they want to discuss here? Things happening? We can give you 20 minutes back since we're at 9.40. We started a minute late. We're at 9.42. So, Bob, anything? All good out there? Uh, nothing comes to mind. We're, we're still not taking stuff into 3.9, which is... A very good feeling. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't confident that, that would happen that way. I'm glad it is. Yeah, I yeah. All right, then. Well, if that's that, then everyone have a wonderful rest of your day, wonderful weekend when you get past tomorrow. Bob's already there because he only works three days. Lucky guy. Yes. Um, I work all day, so lucky me. And uh, we'll go from there. And that's all I got. So until next time, cheers. Bye.